Okie doke, it's a Saturday rather than a Sunday, but we're going out on the bike because I can't go out on the bike tomorrow because uh, I've got some work on. So it's the first ride uh, out on the uh, Triumph Trident this year. Uh, I say that so uh, you can look at the uh, corrosion on the uh, on the discs. I've just wiped some of it off, just reversing it out of the uh, out of the garage. But you know, it's not been ridden for I don't know since about last October, seven eight months, something like that. Such is life. Um, so anyway, we're going out. So this is a 1975 Triumph Trident T160. Uh, the last sort of throw of the dice of, of the uh, British motorcycle industry, along with the um, Norton Commando 850 Mark III. So this is the Trident. It's got electric start. That's a big thing. Uh, and they slanted the engine forwards to make it look more sporty. Uh, you know, it's it's much more traditional Triumph styling than the original uh, early uh, Triumph Triumph T one fifties, which were also three cylinder. Um, but you know, the styling didn't go down too well, especially in America. And so with the T one sixty, they went, yeah, okay, we need to stop, incline the engine forwards and makes it look more sporty. They they put uh, four downpipes on it. Uh, it's a three-cylinder engine, but they put four downpipes on to maybe make it look a bit like a four-cylinder because, of course, when this came out, the four-cylinder across-the-line Japanese bikes, the UJM, the Universal Japanese uh, motorbike, is that what it's called? Yeah, UJM. Four, four cylinders across the frame, they were all the rage. Uh, so this is a three-cylinder but they tried to make it look a bit like a four. Uh, I've got, uh, these are new carbs, so they're uh, uh, what's called Premier carbs uh, from Amal. So they've got a removable pilot jet on the other side. I've got open bell mouths on. Um, I've converted it to twin disc. It's got alloy rims on it. That's a custom paint job. They were never painted like that. That, that was actually painted before I bought it. And so, and I've just left it like that. I didn't do that. Um, it's all it's all pretty standard. The engine I've just rebuilt it, and you know I've chrome various bits and stainless steel all over, etc., etc. But the engine is pretty standard. Um, yeah, just uh, you've got an oil cooler at the front, like all try all triples have oil coolers. You've got the choke on the carbs. On the earlier bikes, you tend to have the choke on the handlebars. Uh, yep, it's uh, obviously a pushrod engine, unlike the Japanese bikes of the time that they were all overhead cams. But you know, they, they the British industry couldn't couldn't uh, make an engine like that at the time, so still a pushrod engine. Uh, yeah, but it's a great bike. It's a beautiful bike. So we're going to go out for a ride on this now, and uh, you know, just to get out and have a bit of a ride. Uh, give the bike, you know, stretch its legs a bit because it's been sitting in the garage for all winter, getting a bit fed up, and most of the summer. What is it now? So it's late. It's actually late June now. Uh, but this is the first ride on this bike because the weather's been so bad up until May. Then I've been out on my other bike, matchless, that I've been trying to sort out. So this is the first ride on this bike. And hopefully, it's all okay.
which it will be, of really? course. Hey, uh, thanks so much. No, no, it's, it's, I thought yeah. I'd be here for hours. I yeah, did. I do try to get round here fast because it's if you're out on a day out, sometimes you, you want someone to get well, to no, you fast. I thought, I, you know, I well, thank God for you know GPS and that because I thought because I broke down a few years ago and he couldn't find me. Right. You know, I wasn't on this road; I was on another road. And he's like driving. You know, he was. It is hard. Sometimes, he was driving yeah. around. Especially if you've not got a signal on is your that, phone. I know. You, you realise, like, I've not been out here, out here that long, but it's common knowledge and you just have to yeah, you have to, I'll just zigzag say, yeah. up and down there. Uh, hi, hi, thanks ever so much. I, I think we're, I think we're mobile. Up and running. Yeah, yeah, that way she managed. I think we're mobile, so thank you very much. Oh, yeah. I think it was the kill switch. The kill switch is uh, short now. Most of the guys out here know their own stuff anyway, it's really yeah. like, um, yeah. 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 Okay, I'll um, I'll, I'll, I'll ahead of you. Uh, thanks so much. I'll tootle ahead of you until yeah, the... No, uh, yeah, you, you, yeah, you get going. If I'm still go, if it's still going by the time we get to the turn off, then I know it's going. Take care. All right, thanks so much.
and uh, there we are back uh, back from the ride uh, got back home of course uh, after we mended it the uh, you know it ran faultlessly it was just uh, the problem was uh, this kill switch here there's a connection there's a multi-pin connector inside the headlight and uh, it's got the original multi-pin connector and unfortunately like way better than bullet connectors they actually went to multi-pin connectors on the uh, on the uh, 75 trident t160 but um they're sort of early multi-pins and uh, you know they just don't make great connection and of course the bike's been sitting all winter and uh, you know the, the connection just just let go simple as that and that's all it was I knew it was something like that. It's just, you know, the engine, ooh, you know, I I saw it would probably be a bad earth on the ignition. Was, you know, there's so many bad earths that, that I know of in the past. You know, that's that's the sort of first thing to look for is a bad earth. Uh, but no, I checked everything. The earths were all okay. So, <coughs> but, you know, we had, we had power. You know, the... Uh, uh, you know, things were turning over, the engine would turn over and so on. Um, so it was something to do with the ignition, um, but it wasn't a bad earth. Um, and then, yeah, so as I kind of suspected maybe that kill switch, and sure enough, we, uh, you know, I'd open the headlamp, poke things about, and, and oh, it was all okay, and then clean the connection, put some WD-40 on it, and, and that's what it was, it was all fine. So, uh, simple little thing like that, but, you know, it's one of those, you're riding along, you're riding along, middle of nowhere, and suddenly, the engine just cuts. Silence. You're just sitting there, and suddenly that silence is, like, deafening. You know, and you're, oh, God, you're in the middle of nowhere. But, you know, the uh, the RAC chap, you know, they came really quick in the end. I thought, I'm going to be here for hours, you know. A man on a man on his own Sunday morning, and um, I thought I'm going to be for it in the middle of nowhere. Anyway, he took he was here at about 35 40 minutes. He, he came when he turned up, um, unbelievable on a Sunday morning, and I'm in the middle of nowhere. Oh, and not only that, but I broke down very near this garage, so I pushed the bike. Well, I kind of from the video, I actually managed to get the bike started again. I thought, oh, okay, because obviously it's a bad connection, and I went about 200 yards, and then it cut out again. But that 200 yards took me up to this, um, to to that uh, where you saw in the video. Uh, there's a garage, you know. There's a sort of garage, and there's a bloke in there working on a like a tractor in this massive sort of massive sort of hangar warehouse thing, full of tools and that. So it was great. So um, I started to take things apart, you know, before the RAC man came, and then between the two of us, we we tracked it down. So uh, there we go. But that's what happens, you know, a bit of a damp garage, you know, you could see that the discs were a bit rusted. You know, it's not that damp down here, but it's just it's just a little bit of damp. We're down in the basement here. And over the winter, you know, things like leather, you know, it all goes mouldy and that. And all my, my leather jacket, you look at it after the winter and it's all covered in bits of mould and stuff. Mm. So, you know, it's just a little bit damp down here. And it's obviously got to the connections and everything. I haven't serviced the bike and there you go. But, you know, the only thing was that I, I didn't do any of my normal stops. You know, when I got the bike going, I thought, right, you know, let's just head better, you know. Um, discretion is the better part of valour. And I thought, right, well, you know, don't want to don't push things, you know, maybe, maybe it'll go again or maybe something worse would go. So I thought, yeah, time better head home. So I did. But, uh, but a great ride and bike going well. Uh, but... I've realised that I'm fairly sure I've got a blocked uh, pilot jet on this left-hand carb because I went to just uh, tune things and that this carb wouldn't tune. You know, screwing the air, screwing and out made no difference at all to the stick over. So I'll be looking at that and I'll do that on video, tuning, you know, we've got to take the carbs off and clean. Uh, I'll, I'll do it anyway. We'll, we'll do it all on video. I'll show you that with the other carbs, you... As soon as you start turning that air screw, the tick, go, tick over goes up and down. But with the left-hand carb, you can screw that pilot in, pilot air screw in, and it makes no difference. So I'm sure it's blocked. So we'll take the carbs off. We'll 
clean everything out, put it back together, and hopefully then that car will be clear. Okay, but anyway, uh, good ride. Eventful. <laughs> Eventful, but in a, in a kind of good way in the end. So there we go.